Hi, I'm Dr. Bart Click of the Chief Research and Strategy Officer here at Prevent Child Abuse America, and I'm here for another research review. This month, I talk about a recent special issue in the Child and Adolescent Social Work Journal on the topic of social norms. Before I jump into the research review, I just wanted to call everyone's attention uh, to the national conference that Prevent Child Abuse America will will be hosting in September of 2019 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our call for proposals has gone live, so please visit our website at pcaaconference.com for more information on how to submit a proposal and to register for the conference. Proposals are due by March the 22nd. So recently, I co-authored or co-edited a special issue of the Child and Adolescent Social Work Journal with Dr. Jeff Linkenbach of the Montana Institute. And it just came out a couple weeks ago, um, and I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. Now, as I go through this presentation, I wanted to bring a couple of things to your attention. I will provide the citation for each of the articles included in the special issue, and below I provide a link. This is what's called the shared it link. This is a sort of quasi open access version of the article. It allows readers to actually view the article, but you cannot download or print the article. This is a link that you can share on social media. You can submit around to anyone. Uh, we also, however, just received word from Springer, the publisher of the journal, that they enjoyed the special issue so much that they are going to actually make the special issue open access for the month of March, whereby you can get on the journal's website and actually download PDF versions of all the articles if you're interested. I provided the link here on the screen. So to look at the articles, the first article in the special issue is authored by myself, Dr. Amanda Habush Deloy from Nevada and Dr. Jeff Linkenbach of the Montana Institute. And we looked at sort of documenting the seriousness and preventability of child maltreatment using national data and data from the state of Nevada. Further, we looked at whether these norms differed across key demographic groups. Next is a commentary by Dr. Dick Krugman and Lori Poland from the newly formed National Foundation to End Child Abuse and Neglect, or ENDCAN. And in their commentary, they talk about the goals of their initiative of both shifting societal norms and financial, financially supporting research, prevention, training, and advocacy. Next is an article by Dr. Joanne Clevens and her colleagues from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention looking at social norms associated with corporal punishment among black, Latino, and white parents. In this paper, they document the frequency of self-reported and perceived spanking, as well as normative differences among these racial and ethnic groups. Next is a paper by Dr. Julia Fleckman from Tulane and some of her colleagues looking at the role of perceived norms and collective efficacy on attitudes towards and self-reported use of corporal punishment in a low-income sample of women in Louisiana. Next is a commentary by Dr. Viola Von Eden and some of her colleagues looking at some of the historical landscape of initiatives to reduce and ban corporal punishment including a current national movement to end the hitting of children. Uh, in their commentary, they discuss the practice and science behind what are called no-hit zones, an emerging approach in corporal punishment prevention. Next is an article by Dr. Finnegan Carr and colleagues discussing uh, what they term an ecologically informed framework for sex trafficking prevention. In this article, they highlight the societal political, cultural, normative, relational, and personal factors that increase a child's vulnerability to sex trafficking. Next is a commentary by uh, Rosie Gomez and Julia Fliss uh, talking about three federally funded initiatives, community-based projects working to shift 
societal norms. That includes the Yakima Valley Farm Workers Clinic, the Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services, and the Massachusetts Children's Trust Fund. Forthcoming in this issue is an article by Dr. Jeff Linkenbach and his colleagues evaluating the impact of the positive community norms approach in connecting in correcting high school student perceptions of alcohol use norms and further decreasing alcohol use in high school students across the state of Minnesota. In conclusion, this special issue provides a good mix of both research, theory, and commentary on social norms and violence against children. If folks are interested, I encourage you to download and read these articles for further detail. And if you have thoughts about a future research review, please contact me at bklika at preventchildabuse.org. Thanks for listening.